Matrix recently resurrected in popularity, pun intended, by the fourth movie, and Andrew Tate's use of it in his vernacular. However, what did the, in Ken Reeves' words, documentary really mean? And who are the real-life Morpheus and Mr. Smith and Neo? Well, to explain this, you need to realise that the woke people are hopelessly lost in the Matrix and will never come out of it, and based people are able to see through propaganda false re reality of the world which attacks you in avenues such as mainstream media, but also in other nuanced avenues like hustle and gang culture which says the goal in life is to party, be rich and famous. While the real life Morpheus is Alex Jones who has freed more people than you think from the Matrix illusion of the New World Order as our God and Saviour by waging an info war against the New World Order, Mr. Smith is more complex. You see, originally he was the Matrix's main hope of defeating Apollo, which is Neo, and the rebels and was akin to darkness in the world, which existed from Jesus' time until 2015. He existed as the Antichrist spirit, but in the third movie, just as in the later half of 2015, he tries absorbing Apollo Neo into a clone of himself. Think of this as Apollo being made into an evil enemy of Christ. However, as Apollo Neo is the opposite and equal force to seek Satan, much like a supernova is the opposite to a black hole, he is able to overcome and devoid the void of Satan with his inner God-driven light. And just like when the Bible says, what you bind on earth, you bind heaven. By defeating the original real-life Satan in the physical realm, Mr. Smith, the clones, and the Matrix are thusly defeated by their inner kingdom of God, mirroring the real-life event of the binding of Satan. You'd have to be living under a rock to not have noticed the shift in culture since 2015, with Brexit and Trump being prime examples of this. This means that Satan is bound in everyone's psyche now, as Apollo has bound him seven years ago in real life. From my enhanced observation, bred by isolation, I have sat back and observed Apollo rising in people since the autumn of 2015 as the main source of opposition to the New World Order. As he has a spirit of self-righteousness, he is like a candle in the dark, which is a form of god godliness, but without being true righteousness or the true light, which is achieved only by having the Holy Spirit lead you. However, now it's not only Christians rebelling against the Matrix, it's Apollo's agnostic army as well. Anyway, much like Mr. Smith, Satan used to be the main God force on earth among non-Christians. Apollo now is, as he has risen an army of Apollo-driven archetypes, and after the binding of Satan is now the predominant force in the psyche other than the Holy Spirit, which exists only in born-again Christians. Now what is the end game, as there clearly still exists an Antichrist New World Order agenda and not everyone on earth follows their self-righteous light. Approximately one third are still of the evil persuasion, aka the woke people and dark triad types. My personal take on this is that Apollo's main goal here is not to copy Christ and undo Satan's works, but which are already undone but to deliver unto him a full army of people who draw ever closer to being Christians as the light of Apollo guides them towards the true light of Christ, which is the end game, not overthrowing the now as well established New World Order, which will only happen to Christ's second coming. So don't count on the based resistance overcoming the evil of the world. Instead, join the psyche war and bind your own inner demons and work on your shadow and try to draw closer to God, in this way you will gain redemption and be free of the matrix's hold over you and you will see the kingdom of God rather than the kingdom of the Antichrist.